Oh. How are you? I'm good. Mr. Robert, right? Yes, that's me. All right. Are you going to Bonita's? The home warden Bonita. Bonita. All right. Mr. Robert? Yes. Do I have your permission to record our ride for my YouTube channel? Sure. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, great. I'm gonna give you my card. There you go. That's cool. Yep. It's just a hobby. Yeah, just, uh, gotta have a hobby. Right? While driving for Uber. Hey. I mean, honestly, while driving for Uber is a little bit boring. But you get to so, meet interesting uh, people. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, but the thing is with the cameras, you talk a lot more. Hmm. Because without the camera, people are often on the phones, and then you know you feel like you don't want to impose. Yeah. Well, wow. now I have a reason to impose. There you go. <laughs> I know I'm always distracted. Yeah. Well, most of us are. Now, you know, there's a million things going on at once. Uh, on the phone always. Yep. Yeah. And I'm down here for yeah. work, so. Oh, you are? I'm half paying attention to what's going on at work and half paying attention to what's going on around me. Of course. And so, like, if you get any phone calls or you want to do any emails on the phone, that's fine. I'll just cut that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't post that, of course. I'm hoping I don't get a call, but you never know. Um, but so then the next question would be, uh, what kind of work do you do? Uh, I do fundraising for a university in New York. Oh, that is so interesting. Yeah. Fundraising for a university in New York. Which university? St. John's University. St. John's uh, University, okay. So we are down here for the Naples St. Patrick's Day Parade. Oh, okay. So today we had a little golf outing. Twelve of us uh, played golf. Nice. Tomorrow we have about 20 people playing pickleball. Uh-huh. Tonight we have a happy hour. Tomorrow we have a boat cruise. Wow. <laughs> you guys are sure? Oh, we're packed. <laughs> I'm telling you. Saturday we, we march in the parade and then some of us are, are doing a parade watch on Fifth Avenue. Uh-huh. Um, nice. And then Sunday brunch and then we go home. Wow, so you set up the schedule? So alumni relations, they set up the schedule. I, okay. I do more of the fundraising, less of the alumni engagement. So we kind of plug in different places and uh, you know make sure that the alums that that uh, our generous supporters of the university are coming out to our events and so how do you find those people though because you're all the way in Naples which yeah. is the other side of the US almost. well you know I I will say that uh, Florida is the second largest hub of our alumni outside of the New York metropolitan area because here's where the people retire they retire here or they get tired of New York and they want to come down to the beautiful weather and they do yeah, a lot of snowbirds. Exactly, and that's the thing. There are 8,000 alumni that we know of in uh -huh. Florida, and oh, that's wow. just what we know of. We don't know necessarily if they're a snowbird or if they moved and they right. didn't tell us. So uh, there's a lot of Johnnies down here. Wow, and and doing well. Uh, a lot of them are doing well, yes, yeah. for sure. Because uh, that does not sound like a cheap uh, program. No. <laughs> um, like we're talking probably hundreds of dollars Oh, I mean, to, yeah, the, the to be weekend. with the events and for then, sure. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. So they, they, yeah, they do all right. That's that's great. I'm happy for them and especially for you guys. Yeah. And it, so then, the money goes straight to the university, or how does that work? Yeah, um, I mean, if it's them paying for an event, then then it's you know they, it's called uh, the the fair market value. They get a, they get something out of of paying for the event but anything sure. on top of that sure. it goes generally to scholarships yeah. that's the biggest thing that we, we fundraise for scholarships athletics and, and different programs that we have so our, our we're very lucky our alums are very generous and, and supportive of our programs it's unique for the United States yeah I don't is. know of any like it, I'm from the Netherlands and sure there just we don't have any programs like that as yeah. far as I know yeah and and, uh -huh. and the times I've been in Europe, when I see fundraising, it's a little unusual. Oh, is it? For you, yeah. You know, like how? Because they're not used to it in the same way, whether no. it's uh, the state is funding the schools or right. or whatever the, the situation may be. Right. Um, so it is un a little on the unusual side in the United States. Yeah, I think like in general terms speaking, because taxes are much higher and schools are more uh, funded by the mm. government probably, 
here it's much more community based. Right. That's such a beautiful system. It is. It um, it also applies to like helping the poor and helping uh, yeah people with difficulties. If you like fall out of the normal track of society, yep. you, you get an accident or well, something it, happens to your life that derails your you from society. Then there are these community. Uh, organizations that that help out and reach out exactly uh, and, and we see that at the university level all the yeah. time you know people yeah. you know in, in fundraising we call them repairs and they had an experience when they were a student you know whether it was they were on scholarship or someone uh, helped them out and and they see their success in their professional career and right personal life uh, because of that experience they had at the university that they now want to pay that forward so they, they now are generous and are, are supportive of scholarships and programs because that's what they received when they were students. Right. But it doesn't happen if you don't ask. Exactly. You have to organize. That's uh, why we got to be down here. We have fundraising. To uh, yeah. We have to talk to people. We have to meet people, shake hands, have events. Right. And then ask. And then ask for generosity. Yeah. And the funny thing is that uh, I worked for a fundraising company in uh, the Netherlands for a couple of years in the office. And I was thought that fundraising was a dirty thing <laughs> uh, for some reason. But it's really like somebody once told me and I it is still to till today that is with me and it says fundraising is the gentle art teaching the joy of giving. Mm. And what it is, is it's really about the joy of giving. Yeah. It is like what you said, it's like if you've received a scholarship in your life and you see that your life bloomed because of it, and then it's a joy to give back. Yes, um, you know? 100%. And, uh, but it, it is a joy to give, right? Yes. Because you make people happy. Exactly. And so it is good to share. And it does make it, us feel good. You know, we, we know that you can't take it with you. you know, the, For sure. The, What's the saying? My, one of my colleagues always says, "The hearse doesn't pass by the bank." So oh, that's a complicated one. Say that again. The hearse doesn't pass by the bank. I don't get that. So the the hearse is what takes the coffin to the the cemetery. So you can't stop by the bank on the way and take it with you. Uh, right. Right. Oh, he, I see. Yeah. Dies, yeah. No. So. Yeah. He doesn't stop there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so that's yeah, a little. You know, if you're if you're philanthropically inclined which so many people are especially people who have been the beneficiary of that yeah. and and see the good works that are happening yeah. uh, you know they want to make sure that uh, you know that that legacy continues too yeah. which is really important to people so we see that a lot too where you know someone will give a, a substantial amount of money to, to name a scholarship in their name their parents name a professor's name so that that, that legacy continues for many generations uh, you know, because you can't, you can't take that kind of stuff with you. So true. And uh, what a beautiful legacy to, to yes. give, right? And to have that uh, parts of you uh, remain in this world uh, doing good. Yeah. Sure. I guess that's all. Uh, yeah, a little bit about karma, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah, absolutely. But so the the John Hopps University, you said? Yes, John Hopkins. John Hopkins. Yeah. Oh, okay. It sounds familiar for some reason. Is it no, no, super I'm, out or is I'm it? I'm St. John's University in New York. Uh, St. John's University. Yeah. Oh. So uh, we're, hmm. we're a very large Catholic school, second okay. or third largest in the country. Um, like how large? We're about 20,000 students. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of programs. That's a whole city. It is. It is. It must be. <laughs> you know, we have about 3,000 students who live on campus in Queens. Okay. Uh, you know, then we have graduate students, we have uh, law students, and um, and we have campuses in Rome and Paris. So oh, also, yeah, uh, so yeah. Many of our students study abroad and experience the the you know the international side. Actually, one of the students that I work with, he uh, two weeks ago was our spring break, so he was in Belgium for spring break with his business class. Uh, nice. Some other students I know were in Ireland. Uh, during their spring break with the, the dean of the business school, so we, we really are preparing students to be to be global citizens because we know that's the world we live in. Wow! So it's really cool things are happening. That is the world we're living. Yeah. The world becomes so small with all these uh, gadgets and stuff. Yep. That um, it's interesting. I've also lived uh, several places in the world, and 
it it's definitely an experience also learns you appreciate your own country more mm. when you see it from the perspective from abroad right we were just talking about that with, oh. with a group of alums that it really it broadens your horizons but it also helps you appreciate what you have oh, and yeah. also what you don't have you know i think sure. in the united states we often think that we're the biggest best and oldest well we're, mm. we're not we're not the oldest right yeah you know, there are countries and civilizations that have been around way longer than we have right so it's nice to see you know the you know i was i was in italy in january and you know there are many many buildings that are way older than the united states and oh, yeah. rich history there um, mm -hmm. and you go other places and it's it's even older than that yeah, i find especially also the way that societies work mm. we can all learn so much from each other like uh, I, I lived in Haiti, for example, oh, wow. which is like the opposite of the United yeah. States. It's like, uh, in a way, a hellhole, maybe, mm. like because of all these gangs fighting each other, sure. and it's super poor and all of that. But if you look at um, the way that Haitians have their family bonds and their friendships, it is so strong. Yes. And they have to because of survival, right? Yeah. But what happens here in the U.S. because we're so rich and we have homes taking care of elderly people, well. You know, we tend to, that's where elderly people go. Mm. But it's so nice to have your own mom as she grows older or dad or whatever uh, live with you. Yeah. But that, you know, and you see that a lot in poorer countries, but I, I think a little bit again the karma. Um, and because we've received from our parents, and then that is the moment that you can give back sure. as well. Yes. And when you look at poor countries, you, we can learn as a society from that as well, I think. Um, and sure, we are very accomplished here. We have everything, but it's it's sometimes also good to to look at these different societies and see how they function. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's interesting. That's the other thing too. With with great privilege comes great responsibility. You know, right. we hear that all the time. So right. if we if we have been successful and. and in fundraising, so many of our alums have been successful. Mm. Well, then, because of that, you have a responsibility to support others and help build them up. Right. Uh, you know, we, we certainly know that education is a way to, to break the cycle of poverty, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, education is is truly important. So true. So, uh, can I can I ask? Does St. John's have uh, a good soccer program? Hmm. Your soccer program is excellent. Uh, oh, is it's, it? It's it's funny where where. In basketball season right now, and basketball is yep. kind of the biggest and most famous, and, sure. and our basketball team mm -hmm. is, is is famous in that oh, sense. Really? Okay. Uh, so we just lost uh, the game about an hour ago, oh. uh, so we're pretty much done for this season. But uh, our soccer team has been kind of traditionally very good. We've oh. had the same coach for well over 20 years. Oh. And when I was a student there 15 years ago or so, the soccer team was far better than any of the other teams. So I actually, I went to more soccer games than I went to basketball games, huh. which in the history of St. John's is a little unusual. Okay. But uh, yeah, the soccer team's great. Interesting. So is it Division... Division One? Yeah. Is it Division, Division One? Big East. Yep. Wow. All right. So what kind of advice can you give my son? My son is a junior in high school. Okay. He's part of the, the varsity team and he's part of the a travel soccer team. Okay. We're going to ID camps this uh, summer. Uh, but what would be the best way to to show ourselves to to St. John's? Yeah, I mean, from, from what I have experienced, he yeah. needs to wake up every day and think about soccer. He does. And, and if, if he does, then... Yeah. You know the the sports world is so weird right now with, with mm. all of the the changing rules with the name image likeness and all of that so i mean he should be doing stuff like this with the the youtube video and uh, okay really we've got that doing what he can to brand himself all right um because that's how people will take notice um and it is competitive and so is. you know Sorry. i know plenty of people that that will start off at a d2 school and do well at a d2 school and then come to a, a d1 school yeah, D1 is very competitive. Very, very, very competitive. And even within that, you know, to then get the scholarships from a D1 school is even yeah. more competitive. Yeah, I bet. You have well, to, he's training as we speak. That's what you have to do. I mean, uh, I always bring him first to the training fields, to the gym. Yep. And then I go work. <laughs> <Yeah. over. laughs> and, um, yeah, soccer is his life. Um, well, we'll see what, where. And we are working on the videos. We're doing that. 
and then uh, the ID cams, of course, they are important to show yourself. Yep. Um, and sometimes I do doubt a little bit about Division One because it's so competitive, but it's especially so hard on the the kids. Yes. That I have super great. Um, admiration for those guys that do it and girls uh, women that um, that are somehow able to <laughs> almost like pro sporters combine it with a university oh, study it's really remarkable it, when, when you amazing. see uh, these men and women having a, a 3.8 or a 3.9 right. GPA and, and right. whatever they're studying and, and then they're also a star on the field and it's really <laughs> remarkable yeah. to say because it is, it's, it's like having very much a full-time job all... Twice. Twice, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that my son doesn't sleep much. He's <laughs> always busy, you know, and that is what I suppose that life yeah. later for him will also be. Like, well, you know, waking up early and going to bed late. College, athletes, they, they teach you discipline and... Yeah. Even, even if you don't go on to be a pro, it, it really does teach you a lot. And there are oh. great jobs within yeah. all of the sports, mm -hmm. even if you're not a pro athlete. You know, they, they need people who are doing marketing and doing sales and doing right. coaching right. and strength training and all of these different things that are... And, and sometimes I think, but I've talked, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of students over the years, you know, and, and they have stuck in their head, well, I'm going pro, I'm going pro. And some of them do, and some of them play in Europe or whatever it is. But then some of them have a great career as a coach, or yeah. or go into sports marketing, or or do something totally different. And, yeah, and, you know, I, that's also what he wants. He wants uh, to study something like physiotherapy and you know, yeah, be part of a great. team, a professional sure. team. Uh, but that would then be after the soccer career, right? Right. So that you have a diploma in your belt. And I also think that that that's really the way to. To do it because a sporting career usually is limited in time yeah and you got to be ready for life after you that as to. well right? it's interesting we were talking about that with some some baseball students some okay. alumni were talking to me about it mm. and there's very much a feeling in baseball that if you're a sophomore junior and you get an offer to go pro mm. you take it right and as as someone in education i don't understand that because uh. you have a year left finish your degree but in baseball, it's such a high probability of you getting injured that you take the opportunity to go pro, and that's oh, so that? counter to my yeah. to my understanding. I'm like, no, finish your degree, get your degree. You, you know, that will be a foundation for you forever. You know, they can never take away your bachelor's degree. Um, oh, but, that's an interesting discussion. I'm not sure I agree with that because <laughs> having pro on your CV hey, hey. that's gonna boost your career as well. But if you now, do the question that for is a what, year, then you uh -huh. get injured. Then what? Then you have to go back to school. Yeah. But now you're yeah. There's all kinds of psychological things. Yeah, because so. school can wait. I don't think that a pro career can wait. Well, that's that's the argument right there. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I understand and, and it. Maybe. I do. It yeah, just yeah, seems yeah, so counter course. to to my understanding of the yeah. importance of education. Yeah. But I do, I get it. I get, you know, if you get an offer to go pro, why would you not go pro? Right. But I also understand your um, reasoning. It is as a diploma is forever. Yep. And uh, the pro season will end and your career as a pro player will end. Yeah. And then what? And how many pros yeah. don't have good business managers and good people around them so mm. they're making bad money decisions? You know, you got to be able to think for yourself too. Yeah. But yeah, okay. That's an interesting world out there. That's for sure. So, yeah, you're smack tech in the middle of it. I am, <laughs> which is why I love what I interesting. do. Interesting. Yeah, I bet. Because I really, I get to, mm. I get to meet really cool people who are doing very interesting things. Mm. And. Uh, Plus, you get fundraising events in Florida. What else could you want? Right? Bit ex uh, exactly. Did you also go to Belgium? I I have been to Belgium. Yeah, you've been there. Uh, oh, not, okay. not on the university's dime, but uh, oh, okay. But I ha I've been to Belgium twice. Oh, nice. Um, I had a friend who was studying there, so I've, oh, yeah. I've been able to go some cool places. Nice. Where else have you been in, in the world? Um. Like holidays or for work or whatever? Yeah, uh, mostly holiday. Okay. Um, I guess I'll start. I, and a lot of Europe. I've done All right. uh, England, Scotland, Ireland, 
Spain, Portugal, France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, Luxembourg, Italy. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the core of Europe. Yeah, that's the core of Europe. Yeah, you see more than I have, <laughs> and I'm from the Netherlands. So, wow, that's amazing. There's a lot to see. There is. And each country is a little different. Yep. And, uh, and even cities within those countries. I mean, I've, yep. I've been to France, but I've never been to Paris. Oh, okay. You haven't been to Paris yet? I've never been to Paris. Oh, you gotta go see that one day. I know. Yeah. Paris is amazing. Versailles, especially. Yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> It was just so beautiful and so yeah. rich and so grandeur and all of that mm. that you can just not believe that a king was living like that. Right. It was so amazingly large and beautiful and rich and they don't make things like that anymore. I don't know, I've seen a few houses like that in Naples. <laughs> <laughs> that's nothing compared to yeah. Versailles. But yeah, there are some very beautiful homes here in Naples, that's for sure. No, I actually literally got nauseous when I was in Versailles. Oh wow! Yeah, literally. I I don't remember exactly how old I was. So grand. Yeah, you go into the first room and you just you just stand there for half an hour in amazement, in awe of the beauty of it. Mm. Like a chair has not a square yeah. inch that is not decorated. Wow! Everything, the walls, the tapestry, the the everything is manually also made and it's so fine detail and so beautiful it's just every room is just gorgeous and then you come in this hallway with room after room after room after room and it just goes on and on and on and it, i couldn't take it anymore <laughs> and i don't know why exactly i got really physically nauseous wow. but just i think it hit me in the face or so how incredibly rich people can be and right. then how because I've lived in poverty mm. not myself thank God uh, but in but you've poor countries yeah. right and um, that that discrepancy that just sit yeah. doesn't sit well with me well I understand we need rich people in, in society for sure but I think there's no need for you to have five homes mm. and 20 cars and, and, and all of like like that. I think that that's just not a good way of spending your money. But anyway, it's not up to me. <laughs> I have a few uh, good ways for them to spend their money. Send them my way. Right? <laughs> me they second. A, they can get a nice scholarship <laughs> in their name. Oh, there you go. Oh, of course. Or oh, I got you. Or a campus yeah, yeah. in their name. Yeah, yeah. I can set any of that up. Right? Okay, YouTube, you hear that? You got money to spare? <laughs> Please contact Robert. Yes. <laughs> hey, you never know. Uh, crazier things have happened. Yeah. Crazier things have happened. I like that saying. That's for sure. Yeah. In Holland we say, uh, you never know how a cow catches a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Basically means the same. Yeah. Be ready for the unexpected, right? Yeah, like... This guy you want to street? Yeah, Unexpected she's not supposed right there, there, right? <laughs> that goes the <to> cow. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but um, no, well, this has been a very entertaining. This has been very uh, educational as well. Yeah, oh, good. Especially because um, I'm not from here, so so I'm trying to get wrap my head around what's best for my son and sure. how he can progress in life as well, you know. Um, he's, he's got a few more months to start applying and soon, if he's a junior now. Yep, that's true. Yeah, we're working on it and like what I said, we sign up with these ID camps. Next year is going to be a senior and that will be an important year also to show off definitely uh, hopefully along the way we'll get an um, invitation of something and uh, you think uh, we should also just contact the schools right i would if yeah. there's places he's interested in once we got his videos uh, yep. up and running and have everything ready we still need to do his one mile time two mile time yep yeah because you know there are a lot of good kids out there and you got to advocate for yourself 
So he has a 3.6 GPA. So that's yeah. good. So academically, he can get into the schools, uh, you know, a school like St. John's on his own. Okay. You know, so, you know, which is important because, you know, they always say that, you know, with the Harvards and the Yale, mm-hmm. you know, their athletes have to be able to get into those schools. Yeah. They, they can't just rely on the fact that they're an athlete. Right. So that's good that he has a strong GPA and, and can carry. And carry yeah, that is a good GPA considered uh, by no, your No, definitely. Yeah? Oh, yeah. okay, great. Yeah, for sure. Three six, solid GPA. Yeah. It's about what I graduated with at the college, so. Okay. I'll take it. Well, I mean, you need to continue that. Yeah. Like well, in the university. It. I mean, if you start with a two point zero, then exactly how are you going to be a good scholar in uh, in the university? So it's going to be tough. So. Well, and that's what they, you know, they want to see past success, because that's a predictor of future success. Right. Exactly. Hmm. Well, I'll tell him that. I'll be happy to hear that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And then uh, his SAT is coming up uh, yeah. soon. We're busy practicing with that. Good. Well, good luck to him. It's it's well, a thank you. It's an exhausting process, but it's exciting. It is exciting, right? To go look at schools yeah. and see what's out there and weigh yeah. all your options and. Yeah, because there's there are a million options out there. Whether you stay it's local, true. you go far, you play soccer, you play, do D one, yeah. D two, you study this, you study that. Yeah, um, a lot of a lot of things to you know, big school, small school, private school, state school. There's so many options. And yeah, for him, right it's it's just really all about soccer. Yeah, it's really about like what kind of team is it? What kind of um, uh, tactics do they play yep. does that fit my the way I want to play sure um, and do they have room for me yep right and that is just all he's concerned about and then the studies are for him yes important but uh, he still sees this as the second priority. but even even within that you know if if there's a great soccer team and Fits all the you know checks all the boxes, mm. and it's in the middle of Nebraska, and he's yeah, yeah. Okay. not ready to do you. Nebraska, or yeah. it's in the middle of New York City, and he's not ready for New York City, or I whatever. You. Yeah, you know, then he's going to be miserable there. Yeah, and not prepared. You yeah, know, so good even, point. Even if it's ju- if it's a be- you know the soccer checks all the boxes, there are other factors. Yeah, no, that is that's definitely the lead. You know, we yeah. say that in New York all the time. You know, the the kids from Florida and California, it's October and they're freezing. And they're like, oh, you weren't kidding about these New York winters. And I'm like, right. wait until January and February. This is nothing. Right. And you've got your big winter coat out. So, you know, it could be a culture shock, too. Yeah. That is true, right? And I... I yeah, like, you do need to look... I did you my need graduate work behind. in North Dakota. I, I uh-huh. love North Dakota over the summer. I don't think I could do North Dakota in the winter. Right. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Robert. was made for a fast drive. Yep. And there was no traffic, so that was good too. So you have a few more days to go? Yeah, I'm here through the weekend. uh, That's nice. Well, I wish you best of luck. Thank you. Especially uh, a lot of money for uh, St. John's. I hope so. That would be good, right? Yep. It's for a good, um, good purpose. And who knows? You never know. We may uh, meet again. That's right. We may. So is this the entrance? This is the entrance. Yes. Okay, perfect. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yep. You're very welcome. Enjoy nice your afternoon. To you. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.